Now then, it seems the princess has gotten everything she needs and it's time for the lovely banquet she's been preparing for. Now, she heads down to the banquet and all of her finery, ready to perform the song. Well, she's already been to the kitchen and added everything she needed to the meal. She got the extra uh, ingredients and herbs and such that she needed and added it to the meal. And everyone's talking and having a lovely time and the band's playing and everyone's chatting and having a lovely time. And her father sees her and bids her over and gives her a hug and a kiss on the forehead and they talk for a small bit. She sees the prince that she's supposed to marry and he looks like a lovely fine fellow but she's not that concerned with him. She talks to him for a little bit of course just to, you know, get the time to flow and before long it's time for her to sing and she does and she sings a lovely ballad of a princess stuck in a cage. But she doesn't sing it as a princess stuck in a cage, but a bird stuck in a cage. And as she sings and her voice carries throughout the room, everyone falls into a light slumber. And as she watches all the guests fall into a light slumber, that, if she remembered the spell properly, is only supposed to last for just a couple hours. Just long enough for her to get out of the castle and just explore, you know, the city of her kingdom. Just, just the capital city. And just for the night, and then she'll be back. At least that's what she's thinking. And once everyone's asleep, she smiles. And bows at the end of her performance, of course. And goes to her room and grabs her things and the mirror's already been transferred to the hand mirror and, and she takes the hand mirror up and goes mirror mirror i did it and mirror says well i'm so proud of you princess i knew you could do it she goes well yes of course and they're only going to be asleep until morning or maybe a little bit before then but it's just so i can have the night out and then I'll be back before morning and everything will be fine. And I can tell father of how wonderful it was to see the city and it'll be wonderful. Of course it will, my dear. Now, don't you worry, let's head out and it'll just, just be for the night, maybe till morning. Yes, of course. So they head out of the castle and make sure, you know, because all, everyone was there her attendants, her guards, the prince and his attendants, and her father. So they have no issues, of course, getting out of the castle. And they go out into the town, and of course she's already changed into serving clothes, and, and her camison, and she has her rapier at her side, just in case. A small bag of things, of course, just in case, so that way she can get a meal, and, you know have what normal people have. She's lighted by the city, the sights and the sounds and all kinds of people she's never seen. Of course she knows what other elves look like, or at least the light-skinned ones like her, but she sees elves with all different colors and skins. And she's just so enamored by everything and she sees people with cat ears and tails and covered in fur. Oh, she's never seen anything like this before. And she's fully enamored. And she goes to the closest tavern. Yes, that's what they're called. And she goes inside and she goes up to the barkeep, which is this person with like devil-like horns and a tail. And she's enamored by him. And she goes, ah, oh, barkeep, I would like one ale and whatever you have that's the house special and the barkeep looks at her this devilishly handsome fellow with the devil horns purplish hair that goes to about his shoulder 
wearing just general purple, purple and pink clothing. He goes, ah, of course, my lady, I'll get you some evening ale and our house special. Please take a seat at the bar. I don't think I've seen you before. She goes, oh, uh, yes, I just arrived in town. Well, wonderful. It's the princess's birthday. Of course, we've never been able to see the princess because of the cre king's decree, but please sit down and have, well, have yourself a meal because of the princess's birthday. She didn't realize that the whole town celebrates her birthday, even though she's not allowed to see anyone. But nonetheless, she'll still celebrate, just like everyone else does, of course. So she sits down at the bar and waits for her food to be brought. And as she's waiting, she just looks around and kind of, she thinks it's called people watching. Yes, that's what it's called. And she just, she sees people that are over like eight feet tall that she's never seen and tiny people with green skin and ears. Oh, this is so, so interesting. She doesn't know what they're called. The book's never described any of these people with their names. But she, she sure she'll, she'll get their names eventually. And she's going to write all of this down in her, in her journal, what she's doing right now. Oh, this is so wonderful and amazing. And when the food's brought to her with the ale, she smiles at the barkeep and says, Oh, thank you so much. How much do I owe you? And he says, Oh, well, tonight, because it's the princess's birthday, everything's on sale, 50% off, so it's just a silver piece. And she goes, oh, okay. And so she pays him that silver piece and delights in her meal as she's eating and taking all these vigorous notes about everything, trying to commit it all to memory. She's just having such a good time. And this is when a palace guard comes in, kind of disheveled. And it must have been one of the guards that wasn't at the dinner, but with what she's wearing, the person doesn't recognize her and goes, I'm sorry to report that everyone in the palace has been put to sleep. We're not sure when they will awaken, and the princess has gone missing. We are putting up flyers, and uh, we wave crest to put one up in your tavern, good sir. And the tavern keeper goes, of course, uh, give me the flyer and I shall put it up on our bulletin board. Thank you, good sir. Uh, I shall be making rounds to the other taverns. And if you uh, see any one of her liking, uh, please uh, have a report to the castle as soon as possible. There are only about 12 guards that weren't ensnared by whatever devilish curse has taken the kingdom. And the princess just kind of hides her face because, well, she definitely doesn't want to, everyone to know that she was the one that cast the spell. And the barkeep takes the poster and puts it up. And of course, it's the princess in all of her finery in the poster. And the barkeep puts it up and just smiles, waves the palace guard off and looks at the princess and goes, just gives her almost a knowing nod and lets her to continue to eat her meal. And she's thankful the barkeep didn't say anything and gives him another silver as if a thank you for keeping quiet. And he goes, that shall be more than enough for your room if you wish to have one. And she goes, oh, um, thank you so much. And he kisses her room key and says, of course, you have a room for the week if you need it. And she goes, ah. Uh, Thank you so much. I am um, not sure how long I'll stay. I might be heading out in, in a day or two. And he goes, Ah, oh, don't worry about it. You have, like I said, the room for the week. She goes, Ah, thank you. I'll probably be heading up for the night once I'm done eating. And uh, that's where we'll leave our lovely princess. As it seems, her spell might have uh, been more detrimental than she realized.